Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Comeback uh, Podcast here. I'm with a dude. I've been wanting to do this one for a while because uh, this guy, I see what he's doing. For those of you guys who just started following me or don't know much about me, we all know that I'm in recovery. Um, I'm, I got a motocross background. It's This was my life, man. There's two things I really love when it comes to sports, and it was motocross and skiing. So I, you know, I'm an addict and I got to reach out to this guy and I get to bring him on my show and I get to see exactly what he's doing. I'm actually excited about this program you have. I don't know much about it. We had a short call yesterday. So I want to introduce Kevin Cobb and uh, just kind of go through what you're doing. And, and and I think it's great, man. And I just want to hear from your side about all the people you're helping. And um, I am going to probably go with a little bit of a, of a, of a sales twist because I believe I want to explain my theory about how I think there's sales and everything. But uh <laughs> first off man just, just thanks for coming on i appreciate it oh well, thanks for having me on man i i, I uh, am grateful for anybody that that tries to raise the awareness and what i'm doing and what you're doing and uh you know it, it can be a lifelong team I'm, I'm pumped for it man absolutely man it's i think that this is gonna be i went to bed excited i text my my brother and then i raced it because i didn't want anyone to know that i'm doing this podcast yet because i know these guys they follow it but because of my story they follow you know they watch me it's hit so home to them like dave derringer and my brother kurt jenison and they both are fans of yours, right? And I see them liking your stuff. So it's going to be cool when I get to pop it out. So what exactly do you do? Like sick recovery racing. Why don't you just give me a, a rundown for my fans, my followers, and tell okay. them what you do. Okay. Um, sick recovery and sick recovery racing and now sick radio. Hopefully you'll be on that show awesome. November 1st with me. Okay. Um, is, you know, sick recovery started for me about, uh, about a, a little over a year ago. I've been in... Um, I'm a recovering addict uh, over nine years. Um, awesome, God awesome. willing, I'll have 10 years in, in April. And, um, you know, I've always been into helping others. You know, that was, you know, I, 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 I when I recovered from addiction, um, it was, I was about three years in and I started helping guys. Okay. Helping okay. guys at the track, um, helping people that I would go to uh, meetings, uh, helping guys through the steps of, uh, of recovery. And, um, I just really enjoyed it. You know, it, it helped me stay sober and clean, and uh, I was getting to uh, to help another addict. So uh, that that was about 2010, 11. Got caught up in money, caught up in work, sober and clean, okay. and uh, was was running my construction companies, and just was tired of the uh, of of who I was. I shouldn't say who I was because that can't change, but what I was in when I was doing construction, and um, and I missed. I was still helping guys, but I wasn't able to help them on the level that I wanted to. You know, uh, you and I are probably alike where I want to be in something one hundred and seventy thousand percent, absolutely, and I want to help everybody all at once, all across the the country. But uh, in order for me to do anything that I felt good about, I had to stop doing construction. So about about two years ago. I uh, I closed the doors on my uh, construction companies. I had two. My wife and I had two of them. Um, what type of construction did you do? I did a uh, I did a lot of commercial construction. I built Planet Fitness gyms all over the country okay. for the last ten years, for the last eight years. And um, it, m money was good, um, but but life wasn't. Uh, I made a lot of money. Um, sometimes sometimes I didn't make a lot of money, but. Um, Work and, and money was becoming my focus instead of helping another addict, and I and I started catching myself, you know. Um, so at uh, seven years, seven eight eight years clean, I decided to make a complete career change. You know, I'm 42 years old, and I said I'm done with something happening with the people that I worked for, and I said I'm done. You know, I'm I'm uh. I'm gonna go do something that I enjoy because I, I, I started to hate construction, you know. The, the industry is more of a cutthroat, um, cheating, lying, you know, it just and it and it and it hurt my family a lot. You know, my, my family went through a, a rough um, you know, I, I haven't spoken to my father in ten years, my brother hasn't spoken to my father in ten years and, and construction caused that, you know. Really? So um, so I, I just wanted away from it and I said and I told my my wife, who uh, owns a she she owns a, a graphic design company that does motocross graphics stuff. I said I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my addictions um, business into motocross and and make it my niche and and focus on motorsports and dirt motorsports and and right now motocross. And um, she supported me and she's like, you know, well we we had some savings and and we uh, we jumped into it and I I made a business plan. Um, 
I, uh, I put it out to some important people in the industry, um, you know, and, and I told them that I wanted to start Sick Recovery Racing to, uh, to try to raise the awareness um, in our sport because it's just so the, – the epidemic in this country is just out of control. You know, I just, I just right now emailed the AMA back and, um, and MX Sports who, is, who are both like – Davey Coons right. is like really open to, to trying to, to figure this out with me on some ideas that we need to incorporate into their programs. And um, so, so the racing team is about raising awareness – and being out there with guys like, uh, in the beginning I had Nico Izzy, um, right, he's right. on his own now, and, and now I have Austin Stroop and some other guys that are A riders, and um, and we go to tracks and we and I talk to people, you know, and and I, I get to talk to people, you know, people come up to me during the day and 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 see what we're doing with treating addicts, and then I'll uh, and I'll get to talk to parents at night, and then every weekend we're at the track, somebody come up, so comes up to me and says, you know, um, you know I just have to die. Or uh, I have a family member that died, and um, you know I wish this would have I would have known about this. And you know I, I love hearing that, but it also hurts me, you know, to know that that somebody, another person, passed away from an opioid uh, overdose. So on the, on the other side of that, sick recovery, we uh, we're a full treatment program. Um, I have a medical director who you may know, Doc McGee. He's the uh, he's the medical director for MX Sports and a lot of and goes to a lot of big races. He's also our medical director. Um, if there's ever a medical need, we are not a medical treatment center, but uh, he's there for us for for uh, for helping guys. Um, and um, it's a live-in live-in program that uh, I have changed. It was originally a minimum of 90 days, and okay. Um, okay. With, just with 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 uh, doing research and trying to uh, perfect the program as much as I can, I want guys to try to stay for six months and. Um, you know, because I, I can't, I, I was in and out of treatment. Um, I don't even remember, I, I think four or five, but, um, and tried to get sober and clean more than that. But, you know, 30 day programs didn't work for me. Um, typical programs of, of going into a, a rehab or detox center, trying to stay there for 30 days. And, you know, the first two weeks are, I'm, I'm barely detox, you know what I mean? And then starting to deal with my issues for two weeks and I'd get out and, and I'd relapse in a right. short amount of time. I didn't, I didn't take the time to recover. Um, so, you know, what I, what I do here is I, uh, I spend the first month getting to know the guys, getting to know their problems, trying to, trying to make them, um, uh, accountable for, for their actions, you know, get them up at the same time. Get them riding. Um, why do I? Why do I make our guys ride? Um, the only way to get a dopamine release, and, and if you're a rider, your brother's a rider. We all have this really, really big tank in our brain that re requires dopamine, and and, right. and my dopamine and your dopamine requirement is way higher than the buddy that you have that just goes to work, comes home, watches TV, and and goes to bed. And on the weekends, he mows the lawn, he paints the fence, and that's what they do, and and uh, their dopamine requirement is like that. Mine and yours, uh, and these kids that ride, or kids that skateboard, or kids that BMX, or MMA fighters, or football players, our dopamine requirement is huge. So we get hurt, which we all you've been hurt right, tons right. of times. I've been hurt tons of times. We get hurt. Uh, we go to the doctor. The doctor uh, right now. I have a broken femur. Doctor throws a uh, a pin in there, and uh, and he hands you a script for ninety pain pills and and sends you home. Um, now, you know a fourteen year old kid goes home, they heal like that. You know I'm a forty two old man, I don't heal so quick. They go home and they heal in a, in a in a couple weeks and they start uh, wanting to do things right, but they keep popping these pills. Um, the the pill is is another form of dopamine release you know an opiate is the only thing that can give you a dopamine release that is equivalent to riding so what happens is you know over over the first couple of weeks they're cool with with not with uh you know they want to get back on the bike but then then at like a month to six weeks to eight weeks you start to see that that desire to ride go away you know desire to do anything go away but 
but pop pills. Well, that's because you're stuffing that 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 dopamine tank in your brain with with a pill, with an opioid. So um, w what I do is, as soon as I get them clean, and they hate it, you know, as soon as they're detoxed, and sometimes not even completely detoxed. You know, Austin, when when Austin w was here th two days, I said you're getting on the bike tomorrow, and he was like, "Who's getting on a bike?" He's like, I'm not riding. I said, you're, you're riding, man. And he, he got so angry with me, fought with me, and I made him get on the bike. I said, if you're going to be here, part of this program, you're getting on the bike. He got on the bike and purposely rode around for two laps, <laughs> rolled everything. He looked at me at the, the, the whole time with kind of this cocky attitude, like, screw you, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And right. He got off the bike, and I said, how do you feel? And he said, all right, I'm going to stop being a jerk. I, I feel a little better. I said, all right. How about you go out in, in, an, in an hour, take a rest, you know, drink some fluids. I know you don't feel great, but go back out. He went back out and did two more laps, but did them at 50%. Went and, and jumped some things and had some fun. And he came off and got off the bike and he's like, dude, this is the best I've felt in months. And, I, and, and it works, you know. Right. And, and you don't have to be a, a, motocross, a pro motocross rider to do this. You know, you can come to my program, buy a pit bike and... And spend some time riding your pit bike through the woods uh, at my at my places, and and you're going to feel better. You're going to replace that that dopamine requirement with something healthy, which is riding. And um, that's why that's why the riding is is a tool for recovery for me. You know, and we we still make them do the steps. Uh, I, I I I take them through the book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I use that. I use okay. the twelve steps in my recovery. Uh, I use counseling for some guys if they have some childhood PTSD. Um, I do uh, a bunch of different things, man. We go, we go, we we find a faith for them that works, whether it's church, whether it's being in the woods. Um, I just uh, I, I I put a really good program together for them that that works for them. So some of these guys out there that might watch this, that that follow me or whatever, they might not be pro motocrossers. They might just want to get in recovery, but they they the non or the traditional stuff hasn't worked for them. So you will accept. Like, I'm not. I don't know what your what your what your size is or your your capacity, but if somebody's like, oh man, I want to try something different. I've always wanted to learn to ride a bike, and I want to. I mean, you're going to help. You're truly here to help people, right? Yes, sir. I will. I will take anybody. You don't have. You don't have to be into to riding. I'll teach you how to ride a motorcycle. You That's know? what I'm I'll, getting at. You'll you'll I'll, show I'll, them a different I'll lifestyle. All that. Right. Yeah. You know, you're you're going to come here. You're going to exercise every day. You're going to eat better than you've ever eaten. You know, you're going to start eating, number one, if you're an opioid addict. You're going to eat real food instead of, you know, uh, Skittles all day. Right. Um, you're going you're gonna to exercise every day, and you're going you're gonna to try to get in shape and, and to uh, bring yourself back to life. So is, it, is the center or the treatment just for opioid addiction, or is it, is it alcohol? Is it, I mean, do you handle anything, meth, I mean, cocaine? Yes. Okay. No, no I, I, we, do, we do absolutely anything, but... Here's my, my gig and what I've done wrong in some businesses in my past. You know, I've, I've always been somewhat of a scatterbrain. You know, I, I can have myself into 20 different things and I'm fine with it. You know, I'm all over the place. I'm, you and I are probably it's very much like the same thing yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm ADHD to the to full go and I'll, I'll do this. I like this. I like this. But, but I've never um, had anything until I started doing Planet Fitnesses in construction that was a niche. And I noticed that. It worked, you know. I, I I did one thing really, really well, and that's how I feel like um, we have to handle addiction in our country. One person has to be um, a a niche guy in each facet in order to to kill this. You know, it's it's horrible epidemic, you know. And I want to be the guy that's all in GNCCs and and motocross and and you know the woods guys and anything that has to do with dirt and a motorcycle. You know, just just so people get to know somebody that they can go to and feel comfortable with and say, okay, I have a problem. And then we need guys in other sports, you know, and, and doing other things. And, and um, you know, I, I use the starfish theory a lot with, with what I'm doing. You know, I, I want to, I want to, I can't save everybody, you know, but I can, I can try to save one guy at a time. And that's, that's what I, that's why I'm focused on this right now. But I'll, I'll help anybody in, that has an addiction issue. I don't care if you have a food addiction. You know, I'm certified. Uh, food addiction coach, you know, I'll, really? I'll help with that. So you guys yeah, got so a, a gym on hand too, or do you guys go to the gym? I mean, what what's it like? So you, I, so if I want, if I'm struggling, I come to the program. You do a little bit of a cleanup, detox period. 
get them on the bike, go to the gym, get them eating some real food, do your yep. training. I mean, what's they stay at your house? Is it a facility? Yep. Okay. They stay, and when we're we're in Pennsylvania half the year, you know, uh, the the other half of the year we're at a a track called WW Ranch. In my opinion, is the number one track in the country. It's uh, it's beautiful. The owners, uh, Wayne and Lisa, and their son Jacob are are probably the the best people that I know. You know, I I love them like family. They have, you know, we were there for uh, three or four months before Loretta's, and. It was awesome, you know. There, it's a six hundred acre, six hundred eighty-eight acre cattle ranch that wow. um, we get. To, we got to ride on every day. We'd get up every morning. We'd be outside. We'd cook our. We cook our meals. We there's ponds to go to work out in. We'd work out in the pond. We'd swim in the pond. We'd uh, we'd enjoy ourselves in the pond. We'd ride, um, you know. So we're we're down there six months of the year, and then we're up here in Pennsylvania, the other six months. And I'm a um, I'm actually going to to, uh, to hopefully talk to the owners of a track up here that are interested in me being there. That that's right down the road from my house, so it'll work really well. But but in Florida, we we stay in 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 trailers uh, and RVs right now. But you know, I have a I have a really cool opportunity that I'm hoping goes through with uh, with a charity that I think I talked to you about that that will help us with some funding to 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 do some housing in each one in each of our our areas, which I'm excited about. Oh, okay. So I want to talk real quick about, cause I've been removed. You, you got a little bit of my story yesterday. It's been years. Um, this I think is going to be my reentry back into going to some races because hell it opened up the hell of a story. I love it. Right. I mean, you opened up the door for me yesterday and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to eventually go back and I'm going to, I want to talk to Mitch. I want to, I'd like to see Austin. I'm going to, I'm going to get involved. You and I are going to be spending some time together in the future here, but cool. I want to talk about the, epidemic on the pro level for a second is it there is it more prevalent than we realize i mean these guys do get hurt a lot for those guys that don't know motor motocross I mean, these dudes get hurt all, yeah. almost every year i mean they're getting banged up even when they're not banged up you know i mean it's it's a rough life so is it hidden behind a smoke screen i mean i we've heard uh, austin i know i don't want to bring up his name too much because i'm not trying to point him out but you know he struggled with it right and he's trying to get better how many more guys out there because when i was in california i mean i know the ryan mills was one of my one of my close friends when we were out there and he went through some struggles. I don't know what happened, but I mean, how many people out there are actually doing the job, doing the career professional level that are struggling? Is there a bunch? Yeah, I think, um, I think our sport unfortunately really likes to, uh, to sweep it under the rug. Um, you know, and, and I don't blame our sport as much as I, I blame the doctors that are giving the pills out. Um, you know, and and I shouldn't use the word blame. I think a lot of I think even doctors on you know medical doctors are ignorant as to how this grabs a hold of a guy. You know, um, I, I can't man every. I just got a new guy a couple of days ago that just came here. You know, fresh off of heroin, and um, you know, every parent's story since I started this a year ago is exactly the same. They tell me. You know, my son dabbled in things at 16, 17, you know, he smoked some marijuana, blah, 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 which tells me that they had a little bit of an addiction issue. Every one of these guys, and don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming doctors completely, completely because every one of these guys always dabbled in something before they, they got hurt, okay? But they, they do their thing with smoking weed or do what they're doing, um, not knowing internally that they're, uh, they're an addict. They get hurt pretty bad, you know? Like this kid, he broke both arms. He gets handed 90 pain pills. Right. He uh, he couldn't stop because he got sick when he tried, and uh, and he went to selling them on the street. He went to selling them on the street so that he could do Percocet. So he uh, he got tired of he got he got tired of eating more than he was selling, of course, and uh, started buying them on his own for 25 bucks a pill. Well, that gets really expensive when you're when you're down in you know 10 pills a day, and. Uh, all these kids go from pain pills to heroin because it's five bucks a bag. It's cheaper, and, right? Uh, it's way cheaper, and um, and then they and then they die, man. You know, two hundred people a day right now are dying in our country, or are, 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 are overdosing, I should say, in our country, not dying. Right. But you right. know, there's there's how many there's tons of people getting uh, given Narcan every day to save a life. You know, it's that video you shared the other day of that uh, with the little four year old boy, uh, or not video, the picture or whatever it was, man. Yeah. That I. I normally don't read stuff like that, but that one hit home and I'm like, you know, 
when in my struggles, I never put my kid in danger, right? I mean, that just wasn't what I did. I have a seven year old boy, but uh, I could see how the drug could take over and they don't even realize what they're doing. You know, I, I had like mixed emotions. The one side I feel for them and the other side I hate them because they're putting a little boy in danger, not to mention the school bus and all the stuff, you know? And yeah, you, like you said earlier, man, this epidemic is, is out of control. It's crazy. And, 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 you know, back to your original question, I'm sorry, I got off track Try. there. Um, they, they, the, our sport has kind of looked the other way and, you know, and, and, you know, what they, what, what happened with like, like with, with Nico and, and, and this was on TV. I'm not saying anything that's, that's, that's messing with his privacy. You know, he got, he got hurt real bad. You know, he fell out of the sky and fell on a, on a triple at Jacksonville in 2009, I believe, you know, he got hurt and everybody just walked away from him. You know, everybody kind of just turned their back on him. You know, you know partly because he might've had some issues with guys or anything, but you know, that was a grueling, a grueling, grueling injury that, that everybody needed to support him and maybe help him change instead of turning your back on him and, uh, and wondering what he's doing, you know, with the pills and doing whatever it is. And, and it, and it set him off again, unfortunately. And, um, you know, I feel for guys like Nico and, and for guys like that, that go through a rough, rough injury and, and don't have a whole lot of support. It, it, it messes with your head. You know, these pro guys have all the fans in the world when, when things are going good. You know, the second right. they're hurt, you know, they're a nobody for a little while until they can get back on the bike. And, and that's, rough. that's rough to your psyche, man. You know, they're, they're, they're a big deal to everybody until they're hurt. So, you know, it's, it's this, this whole addiction thing is not just about a physical craving. It's, you know, it's physical, emotional, and it's spiritual. And, and when, when your spirits are down like that, it's, it's tough to get back to what's, what you love. So I want to talk a little bit about the other side. I mean, I see you work with a lot of mini riders, a lot of, a lot of little kids too, right? So I mean, obviously those guys aren't addicts. No. They're just kids, right? So there's got to be another side to this business plan that you talked about earlier, right? Which means the sales yeah. side. I mean, you got to be able to operate money. You know, you're, you're helping someone. So they're, you're selling yep. a service. Uh, you're selling something, right? So with these mini kids, what do you, what do you do with them? Like the parents, I know how many parents are, right? They want their kids to be the best. They want them to be around fast guys. I'm sure some people want their kid to ride with Austin every day because he's yeah. was he's amazing, you know. So, yeah. what do you do with the little kids? Um, and what I do with any amateur, you know, and and I, my my ulterior motive with training kids, you know, I, I learned to 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 train motocrossers through Gary Bailey. You know, I spent a lot of time with Gary. Gary was a. Uh, was was and I are very was very close. You know, he's he's spent a ton of time with me, teaching, mentoring me how to train. Uh, I've learned a lot from guys like Timmy Ferry. Um, you know, doing just just training with them and then and then teaching me how to ride and doing things different things. And I documented how to do it. Uh, and sometimes videoed Gary on on what to do. And uh, my my reason for for training kids is is I want I want to get to the problem before it's problem. That's what I was hoping That's you were going to say. I, I want to educate. It's, it's to me working with kids, with little kids, and working with any amateur before they're hurt or be, or, or before they're full blown addict and not riding is preventive maintenance. You know, I spend some time with these kids. I spend a lot of time with kids, and um, and I try to teach them values. I try to t try to teach them about what addiction has done to some guys. You know, and Austin's cool with me talking about what you know what what happened to him, and he'll talk to people and. And um, it's it's all just preventive maintenance, and and that's why I started the radio show. Is to uh, is is you know the first hour of the radio show is called Amateur Hour, and I want to just talk. I want to make little kids feel like they're pros. I want to interview them. I want to talk about what they're doing in the future. I want to talk about what bike they're riding, what track they're going to, and make them feel really good. And then and then the second part of the show is called Kill the Addiction, and hopefully what you'll be on to talk on, and and uh, and so that maybe they'll. They won't turn that radio off, and they'll listen to what addiction has done to some famous people and to, to people they've heard of or, or they haven't heard of. And and so my my whole point of my whole point of of working with kids is preventive maintenance and to teach them to to stay away from it. And I I love that because you know I have an eight year old he'll be eight years old my nephew um, he's really good he rides with KTM you know he's he's all about moto every day right. He loves it. I go to lunch with him and my son, and he gets my phone out and watches videos of guys ride. I mean, he's he's your typical kid, just like my brother was racing up. That's what they love, I'm sure, just like Austin. And just like I was to a point until I fell off at 14 years old. But um, I, the addiction in my life, I'm his uncle. I bought him his first dirt bike. I love him. I'm his godfather. 
has hurt him already. Subconsciously, he doesn't even realize it, right? So yeah. I like what you said there about getting to the problem before the problem starts, right? So I want to, I think it'd be cool to get him involved and get him around stuff like you because he's going to understand that the same blood that runs through me and that same dopamine like you talked about is in him right now. So how's he going to channel it if he goes this route? So I really like what you're doing there. Yeah, it's cool that you're seeing that too, man, because every kid's different. It's cool that you're seeing that he has some of those some of those issues that you have. You know, I, I have a 10-month-old dude, you know, and and um, I see it already. Like, you know, my wife is like, we are in trouble. Like, he is not afraid of anything. You know, my, I have I have other children, and, um, and they're totally different from him. But he is just full bore dopamine, you know. And, um, and um, it's cool that you're, you're getting to see that before. And, and that's what parents need to look for, man. And they just don't know. You know, parents just don't know. They got to they look for that stuff. Right. So the radio show, is yeah. it, are, what's the purpose of it? I mean, just to, to make self-awareness of the addiction, to make for the, the mini kids, to, for the amateurs, I should say. Are you going to do a pro yeah. section too? I just want to see where the future is going for you. They, there will be, uh, there will be, you know, maybe, maybe I'll have a co-host like that the kids can talk to. Like Austin's going to be my co-host on the first show because he's here with me and he says some really funny things. And Austin's known to, to have some funny tweets, some, some funny posts. He's he's just a funny dude. Okay. So uh, he'll be on he'll be on with me on the first one to talk to kids and then talk about the addiction side. But no, you, you like like we talked about, you know, it's 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 strictly to to have some fun with kids. Um, uh, to because I don't feel like like amateurs. You know, Pulp MX is is an awesome. It's one of my. It, I love listening to it. I try to listen to every show every week. You know, Mathis does an awesome job with it, with the people he has on. It's really exciting. But the amateurs don't get anything. You know, they, we don't do anything for the for the kids and the parents as far as radio and notoriety. The ones that aren't getting paid <laughs> to do it every week, you know. And I right. and dude, you know the daily grind of an amateur rider if they want to be big time, you know. And you, you and it's and it's and it's crazy, man. You look at I look I know a bunch of fifty riders that I train. You know, and they're at it every day, working their butts off. You know, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a daily grind to, for to want to be, uh, a top rider. And you know that that's a subject that we're going to talk about on the radio. You know, that's a subject that you and I could talk about. Is is you know, um, well, these if you're not a if you're not a uh, a rider or if you're not involved in the sport, you know, some people are like, you know, that these dads are crazy. They're out every day and they're training their kids and they take them there. And it's just like the focus. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't get it. Like if they're with dad and they're with mom and they're with their other riding buddies, they're not going to be on the street. Right. They're not going to be uh, at school and after school smoking cigarettes and smoking pot for the first time. Um, they're going to be around a group of people, and the moto industry is such a tight group. Even the people that despise me, if I had my kid at the races and he was screwing up, they're going to come tell me, or they're going to come tell me, tell somebody that cares about me so that we can all deal with it together. And, exactly. And that's what I love about this industry, and that's what people that aren't in the industry don't understand, you know, and, and, um, so keeping them involved in a sport, you know, and, and, and working really hard to me is awesome. You know, absolutely awesome. Are you going to, so are you going to start adding more sports than just uh, moto? Are you going to, you going to get some other, I mean, is it going to be extreme sports type? I shouldn't say extreme, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? Like individual sports, add some more brands to get people coming in. Yeah, I would like to, you know, after after I do as much as I can to get my name out in moto and get to the right people in moto, um, I want to, you know, there's been some guys in GNCC that have reached out to me recently. You know, I've had a couple guys for the radio show ask, you know, can we do a segment on GNCC? And I said, sure, you know. So, you know, I wanted to go moto, GNCC. I really, you know, I... I um, I think I think that there's probably a, has to be some issues in the MMA world, and and I have a little bit of background. I spent some time boxing and 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 uh, and doing the MMA uh, in my 20s, and and um, I I would like to move into that, but but for now and for a long period of time. Um, well, there's a huge issue. Look at look at John Jones. Yeah. You know yeah. one of one of one of my best friends is Clay Guida. That we grew up together. Nice, awesome. Yeah. So, and you know, he's going to be on the show. He's supposed to be last week, but he had to go to Las Vegas. But well, you're absolutely right. It's 100%. I mean, he's a great guy, doesn't have any issues like that. But 
you see it. He tells me yeah. about it. I mean, it's out there, you know? Yeah. Well, those guys are getting, you know, I was hurt all the time. I was in pain all the time. So those guys, there's got to be a bunch of, a bunch of guys that are, that are trying to get through the pain and then they don't know how to stop. And, and, um, you know, that's where, that's where I'd like to one day get to. But for right now, I want to focus on, on the extreme sports, you know, the, you know, the freestyle guys, the GNCC moto, you know, um, my, my goal in the end is to have a facility that's like a Camp Woodward. That's you awesome. Know, you know, where I have, I have half pipes, I have ramps, I have, I have air, skate parks, I have moto, I have, I have dirt track, you know, I have woods course. We have everything that, that people can come to to get away, to, to deal with what they have to deal with on a big level and, and enjoy it, you know, and, and actually enjoy recovering. So that's ultimately where I was going with the, you know, because I know I got respect for your time. You're coming to the end, but wanted to find out where you see the future. That's ultimately what you want to do, huh? Yeah, I, I want to have, you know, the future for me is trying to get enough donations um, from, I want some big star to step up and be like, look, you and I are going to build what you want and we're going to save a lot of lives. And, um, you know, I, I've been waiting for that for a year now. <laughs> so, <but laughs> Patience. I keep praying for it, man. I keep working my butt off, but um, you know, that's that's the goal. Is I want to have a facility. You know, down down at WW Ranch, we have 600 acres there. I can put Supercross, Arena Cross, a GNCC Woods Course. I can build half pipes. I can build ramps. I can I can do whatever I need to do there for extreme sports. You know, and um, the place in PA here, I have a ton of room to do what I want to do there. I've I've uh, 40 acres. Um, you know, it's. It's uh, it's something that I, I want to focus on for our for our sports because you know you know you know snowboarders you know uh, right. skaters they all get hurt skate parks people are getting hurt every day you know um, bicycle guys you know you know they're they're getting hurt every day you know a pump track would be so cool to have you know um, so yeah that that's that's my goal is is to help treat everybody in in the extreme sports the action industry. sports world yeah yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I want to focus for a couple minutes real quick on you, just for a second. Okay. How has this changed the quality of your life? Your faith, what is your, obviously I believe you have a strong faith, right? Very. What is it doing for you on a day-to-day -day basis to actually help people? What does it mean to you? Man, you just made me have to get choked up. <laughs> um, you know, what it does for me is uh, it, it has completely changed my life. These guys that I spend the time with don't have a clue that, that some days they're doing more for me than I am for them. And, um, I, I get to get up every morning and go rip them out of bed and, you know, make, we make breakfast together and, and I get to, I get to love another human being that, you know, doesn't feel that they're lovable right now. And, um, you know, I might be rough on them sometimes, but, um, but, I love them to death, and and just just me getting to uh, to to be different every day, and not have a daily grind of you know the work I did before because I didn't love anybody <laughs> in construction. You know, I I get to I get to be with them every day. We get to work together. I get to help another addict, which was which is part of my program that keeps me clean and sober, and um and I get to lead them to a faith that works for them. You know, you asked if I have a I have a faith, and and my faith is uh is uh I believe in Jesus Christ, and Me too. and that that's um believe that's a that's just over the last year and a half for me. You know, I'm I'm a recent um believer, and uh, I I think it was the big struggle that you know in my life, and I think that this program partly happened so that I could start uh, following Jesus, and and take you know I I take our guys to uh, my church every week. And they, it's a, it's a different church. It's kind of a new age type thing. There's right. music, there's rock and roll, there's fun. And, uh, we really enjoy it. The guys actually look forward to it. And that's amazing to me. That's what, um, you know, I took, I took, uh, nine guys to church last week. You know, it was, it was pretty awesome. And, um, we all had a good time. We stayed after, you know, you know, just, just talking to everybody and having a good time. And, you know, my faith is, um, my faith has grown solely because of this program that, that, that I started. Um, and then, uh, I'm, I'm happier right now making a 10th of what I've made in, in the past three years, um, than I've ever been in my entire life. 
you know. Um, I always thought that money made me happy, and that was my problem, you know. Um, my upbringing was the more toys you had, the more more happiness you had, and um, that's not true for me anymore. I uh, the the more the more I get to help, the more uh, I see growth in these guys, and the more lives I save, the happier I am. You know, there's days I go to go to bed just crying happiness because you know because some 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 guy decided to tell me that he prayed today and and it changed him. You know, or 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 that he wrote in his journal and he feels a little better about what he's done in the past, you know, or he's let go of some, some guilt that he's had, you know, it's, you know, I get, I get great pleasure in, you know, watching a guy like, like Austin, you know, go from being five years out of the system. And, uh, you know, he, when we went to Muddy Creek and he raced the first time in outdoor in five years for the regional, I, I was a mess. <laughs> he took off on the gate and, uh, I was crying. You know, I, I was, I was, I didn't care where he finished. I just, uh, I was just grateful that, that he was alive, you know, because I know, I, I know where, where I was, you know, and I remember that every time one of these guys is struggling, you know, it's, uh, you and I both know where we came from and, and how, how close to not making it we were. And, and that, that's what it's about for me, man. It's, it's just about making a difference and and trying to save them because too many are dying. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's it's big for me, you know. I, I'm I'm just I'm just I'm just more grateful in my faith. You know, I had a guy like you know back here, you know, Travis Pastrana. Travis is the one that that gave me the initial donation to get me started in this program. I would never have been able to do what I did initially and get to the races I got to without the financial help and support from Travis. I mean, it's just that's awesome. It's crazy, like how how lucky I am to do what I'm doing. So uh, yeah, my. My faith is stronger than ever. That's cool. So I know you got to get riding. I know you got to get going and doing some stuff. So I want to talk for a second of just how do we reach you? You know, I want to have you back on. I'm sure you and I will build a friendship yeah. here. But how can some of my supporters, they do want to donate or if they want to learn more, maybe they have some. I mean, a lot of car guys, I see they have pictures of their moto, you know, motocross too. So, I mean, believe it or not, it's a little bit wider than I think we both probably realize. Um, how do they find you? What do we? What do we do? What can I do to spread your word? You can um, you can find me on on the web is sickrecovery.com. You know, there's a spot on there that you can donate. There's a spot to just get a hold. Of. My number's on everything I do. If you want to call and just and just talk about anything you have going on, um, my my Instagram is sick recovery racing. My Twitter is uh, sick addict coach. Um, my Facebook is Kevin David Cobb. My name. Um, any, any sick recovery you type in, you'll, you'll it'll, find it'll me. pop up. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, just my, my, uh, my, my numbers all over the place. That's my personal cell. Anytime anybody needs, I don't care if it's four o'clock in the morning, you, you're struggling, call me or call Mark, call Mark. <laughs> four I get those calls too, man. I mean, probably <laughs> not as much as you, but I get them a lot. So, <laughs> Good, but, man. uh, all right, man, well, I'll let you get going. I appreciate your time. Uh, tell Austin, I said, what's up and, um, okay. go, Go do some training today, and then I'm going to give you a call later in the week, okay, man? All right, brother. Let, um, one last thing. Sick Radio is uh, is on November 1st. You're going to be on there with me. Awesome. Uh, it starts at 7 o'clock. So and November 1st, Sick Radio. As we get closer, let me know what I need to do, and I'll share it, and I'll help you. Uh, I'll help spread the word to my guys. All right, brother. I appreciate everything you're doing for me, man. All right, bro. God bless. Take care. Later. You too. Bye.